It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Hi. Welcome to High Noon with David. This is show number 282. Here to bring you a gift. Gift of boldness. Talking to two of you. Those of you that already are believers, you're hungry for more. And those of you that are, that are about to become believers and hungry for more. Here to bring you the gift of boldness. Boldness to do what? Boldness in to, to do something different. Instead of flowing with the current of doubt and unbelief, with three churches on every corner, and they some good ones out there, but instead of flowing with the current of a doubt and unbelief, the gift of boldness to turn around and go against the flow, the current of dead tradition that's made the Word of God of none effect, to go against the flow, God is in control, and God is he making everything happen the way He wants it to happen. <clears throat> oh, I get confronted online and through email. All that stuff's been debunked by the Scriptures a long time ago. Where you get in trouble with saying that God's in control, you'll take a, a Scripture out of its setting and make a doctrine out of it. Instead of reading it, especially the, the epistles, the letters written to the church. Uh, one thing, you know, I chewed on the book cover doing, doing English literature most of the time. But one thing I did learn was how to divide up a sentence. Forgive my smoke. My, it's, it's cold this morning. My smoke winds out of the north. Thank God for the north wind. We love the north wind in Mississippi tends to blow the humidity back to the Gulf and brings in some dry, cold air from the north. That's one thing we love about the north is your cold, dry air that you send to us. It's just when you clash with that hot humidity, we get a lot of tornadoes around here. We just hunker down and keep on living, though. Because <laughs> we live by faith. At least I do. At least to me real strong. It takes guts. It takes intestinal fortitude. It takes a backbone. It takes a pair of them to turn around and go against religious tradition in the churches either to go against work. Well, well I, I've asked I've asked thousands of people over the last 42 years if you died right now, and I don't mean to wish anything bad on you, but if you died right now, would you go to heaven? And they immediately say, well, I ain't been to church lately. That ain't got a damn thing to do. With whether you saved or not. Thank God for a good church. Find you one. Go to it. Take care of the pastor. <clears throat> Make sure his tires ain't flat. Make sure his car's running good. Make sure his oil and filter been changed. Make sure he ain't in debt. And if he is, get the deacons and y'all get together and raise some money and get your pastor out of debt. Take care of your pastor. If he ain't doing right, get on your knees. You should be on your knees anyway, so to speak, and praying for your pastor and believing God for your pastor. I've counseled a many a pastor over the years. I've, I've preached in almost every state in the United States of America, including Hawaii, and thinking about Alaska <laughs> in the summertime. <laughs> And I've helped a minute pastor behind the scenes because me being from the outside, I can come in and say some things and, and, and not leave and spread it all over on Facebook and your mama book and you book and all the stuff out there. <clears throat> you know, the word says love covers. I have, I have a great heart for pastors, but I have a great heart for the other ministers also. And there's a lot of disarray in the body of Christ. I've told the Lord, I said, your body show is messed up. And then he chuckles and yeah. You part of my body, David. And boy, have I been a, I've been the chiefest of the messes. I told one pastor's wife in the post office one time, she said, well, what you up to? I said, oh, I'm just going around causing trouble. And she grins. She said, that's what you do. <laughs> I'm not afraid of controversy. I'm not afraid of the subjects that most people <coughs> are coughing 
skip over those subjects. And next thing you know, they're three or four chapters away from whether, you know, we're going to read the Bible through in a year, but we're going to skip that part right there. What? Chicken. You see, where I was mischievous growing up, when they when they choked and coughed over these certain chapters in the Bible, I go home and read them. Well, I mean, you told me since I was a baby to read my Bible and pray, and so I'm reading my Bible. Now you're telling me I'm in trouble for reading my Bible. <clears throat> the president of our denomination that I used to be a part of, Southern Buddhist. <laughs> I was baptized twice there, just in case. Because I didn't know who I was in Christ. I hope you're listening to me. He got up and says, I know what the... I mean, here's a front, for top paragraph of, the, of, of the, the so-and-so record of our denomination. It says, I know what the Bible says about speaking in an unknown tongue, but here's what we believe. And he put we over my heavenly Father. Ooh, you're an idiot. I don't care if you do have a degree in front of your name and one behind it and got a degree in the middle of your name. I don't respect that crap. One guy called up one day. <clears throat> he used to talk to me. Wanted, wanted me to rejoice with him about somebody in the family got their Ph.D. Well, I got my Ph.D. in post hole digging and hauling hay, pile high and dry. Hope you listen to me. Now, listen, I, bl I believe in education big time. I studied more since I got out of college than I ever did when I was in college and high school and elementary school. I don't know how I made it through. Hope you're listening to me. But too many times, <clears throat> and most times, the mind gets educated at the expense of your spirit. When you die, it's your, it's your spirit that gets born again. Then your mind has to be renewed by the word as a believer. So, you know, when I first started this, I got more letters about water baptism. I said, look, I've been baptized twice. Leave me the hell alone. And I said, just quit sending your letters. Can they go right into file 13, which is, I don't know if you can see those flames right there. They've kind of died down a little bit. That's file 13 right there. I don't listen to that junk. Paul said, don't argue the word. It only gender strife. So I ain't going to argue with you. Now, if you want to sit down and have a common sense spiritual discussion about the word, where you will admit you've been wrong, because I, I tell you right now, I've been wrong, 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 and I'm still learning. I'm still finding out I've been wrong about some things. I tell you, one area is an area of works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, so You are saved by grace through faith and not of works. And much of the church world is wrapped up in works. I'm not in performance mode. <laughs> Lisa got healed of eating them. It's been three weeks now. <laughs> I found out I've been rescued by the blood of Jesus. And I ain't got to go around here acting like a religious fool, making sure I don't cuss when I'm around the preacher. Of course, I guess I am a preacher. I have cussed around me before, and recently too. At least I'll tell you. <clears throat> I've been rescued. My past sin, my present sin, and my future sin. Woo! I'm going to get a letter on that one that's going right in 513. I ain't going to argue with you. You know, I'm interested in people that want what God sent me to bring. Now, if you're somebody full of love, and you spiritual, you actually have a prayer life. You know, I watched that Robin Hood movie that made 10, 20 of them. And the one that Mel Brooks made as a as a uh, kind of a spoof on the rest of them, that Robin Hood stood up and said, "Well, unlike other Robin Hoods, I actually have a British accent." <laughs> and I was laughing as hard, and I want to say, unlike many ministers I know, I actually have a prayer life. That's the reason I don't give a rat's behind, or I could give a rat's behind. Either way, now see, I didn't get that part in English lit. So whichever if I'm saying it wrong, I just don't care. But you got the point. If you have a genuine prayer life and you come to me and say, hey, Dave, let's go get a bite. You know, that show interests me. We go, go get a bite. I love people. People don't believe this about me, but I love when somebody comes to me 
and challenges me, but they do it from having meditated in the Word and having spent time in prayer daily. But if they just puking out something they've heard all their life, the, the thing about God is in control. You pull out Job, you pull out Romans 8, 26, but you pull Romans 8, 26, that scripture where all things work together for good for them, called according to God. He works all things. You pulled it right out of a letter that's in the context is prayer. And most people, I, you'd be amazed at ministers. I say, tell me about your prayer life and they look down. I'm talking about call themselves word of faith. People, people want to know where you go to church at, David. Let me ask you a question. How many hours a week do you spend praying with your pastor? <coughs> I said, well, I pray hours with my pastor over the phone every week. I taught him how to deer hunt 37 years ago. He'd be a coming hunting in, in day after tomorrow. He's, a, he's one of my best disciples. He's one of the best deer hunters you'll ever meet. We, we go to mountains in Colorado and the Rocky Mountains. The taxidermist said, well, y'all killing these great big... He said, no, 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 don't tell me, don't tell me. Yeah, because he'll tell everybody in the state and they'll be right there on them. We... we my pastor, and he's always, when I get ready to sight in my rifle, I just hand it to him. He's 78 years old, just turned 78 or 79 this past month. He's accurate as he can be. I've seen, I've been his spotter before with my binoculars. At one time, there were like 30 does surrounding this book. It's a smart book. Well, in Colorado, if you shoot through the book and it hits the doe behind that, you're going to get charged a chunk of money. For, for doing that. So they were surrounded. <clears throat> I had my binoculars. I'm going, don't shoot. He said, he got a rifle up to his shoulder. He's about 75, I guess, at this point. I'm going, don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. And it's like the Red Sea parted. The doze, there was a channel opened up behind him and in front of him. I said, don't shoot. Don't shoot. I said, shoot. Oh. That buck, I can't even, I don't know if I can get wide enough for the camera. I got this little thing, I can see it. Big, nice one. He got him hanging on the wall. You say, well, I don't believe he's shooting, but we show sure ate that sucker. I guarantee you, when he took that deer home to Houston, Mississippi, his in-law, his, one, his daughter-in-law would come around the curve on two, two wheels because he got like, Eight kids and 72 grandkids. <laughs> they come and get them piece of meat for the, for the vultures. <laughs> come down and eat that, get all that meat. <clears throat> a deer don't last but a few minutes at his house. Boy, we had so much fun. He black as his camera. We've been fresh, best friends uh, for 37 years now. And we don't tiptoe around this black, white stupidity. We don't even talk, we don't talk racism. We talk the love of Jesus. We just, we equals in the blood of Jesus. And you call yourself a believer and want to holler about that all, stuff all the time. You ain't in the word, you ain't praying, you ain't operating in love. You are not fully matured in love. So shut that stuff up and get in the word. Ha! <clears throat> what you going to do, come get me in the bushes and run me out of the bushes? I'm like old Br'er Rabbit. He said, please don't throw me in that briar patch. I'm like, I'm like David E. Dixon. Please don't throw me in the swamp. Don't throw me in the bushes. That's where I'm at home. And if you come in there looking for me, you better be good. Because that's, that's where I thrive is in the swamp, baby. <laughs> oh, I ain't normal. I ain't been normal since I come out the womb. I told I was preaching in, in Los Angeles one time. A church I helped start in Huntington Beach suburb of Los Angeles, right there in the, the beach city is what I call them. They have the international surfing competition there. And I've been on that beach a many days, and I was up there preaching. I said, you know, I'm just trying to be normal. And my pastor at the time, Daryl Rommel, he, he hollered at Dixon, you ain't been normal a day in your life. <laughs> but I'm having so much fun being abnormal. You remember that one movie? Uh... <laughs> See, I ain't even got to my bus text yet. <laughs> But that movie by Mel Brooks, I think, what's the name? Young Frankenstein or something. He put that brain in that monster and he walked backwards <laughs> instead of forward. He looked at that other guy and said, well, which brain did you get? And they had brains in a jaw. And they you know, have names on them, <clears throat> like George and Betty Sue and Ethel. And 
And he said, what brain did you get? He got Abby. Abby? What was the last? Abby who? He said, Abby Normal. <laughs> he, put, he, put, he put a brain named Abby Normal in that monster head. Well, you may call me Abby Normal if you want to. But I'm having more fun than all of you put together. I laugh. The experts say the kids laugh 300 times a day and adults laugh way below that. Well, I laugh like the kids do. When, I, when I'm with my grandkids, we laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. It's healthy. That's the reason I'm healthy. It's one of the main reasons. There's a book I got by Dr. Roy Hicks that says, He who laughs, she who laughs, last and last and last and last and last. I just don't care. The word says, cast the whole of your care upon the Lord because he cares for you. So I just got rid of all, I cast all mine over there on him. I just don't care. My daughter's born again. My son-in-law's born again. My grandkids are born again. Hope you're listening to me. Now I understand about babies dying. I believe they go to heaven. All these abortions, I believe they went to heaven, every one of them. And I believe the age of accountability is different for each child. Depending on uh, my daughter, I, we were riding in my El Camino and coming from church one night. And she said, Daddy, what does born again mean? And I said, well, baby, if the word says if you confess Jesus as Lord, she said, Daddy, I do that right now. She said, Jesus is my Lord. I said, oh, okay. And then... And I said, and the Bible says, if you believe in your heart, Jesus died for you and God raised Jesus from the dead. She said, wait a minute, Daddy. My four and a half year old daughter. She said, wait a minute, Daddy. I do that right now. <clears throat> my little girl got born again. Coming home from church at four and a half years old, she confessed Jesus as Lord and believed in her heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says, if you do that, you say, now, now. You know, they, they want to get in controversy. I've had people come. They always want to bring up some controversy about this. Now, just, just chill. Get, get your Coca-Cola and pour some peanuts over in there and relax a little bit. Open your, wipe the dust off your Bible and get in there and meditate in it. Don't memorize it. Don't do a blankety-blank thing. Memori memorization puts it in your head. Meditation puts it in your heart. I know people, they, they just pride themselves on knowing every little trivia thing about the word <laughs> no power hello it's meditating in the word you know I read the scriptures on speaking in tongues 30 times a day for several years before I got comfortable with it I was raised southern Buddhist I mean southern Baptists and they told me that speaking in tongues is of the devil and well I you know every time I watch TV and they got the the bank robbers are handcuffed and they lead them away. They ain't none of them speaking in tongues. The hookers, when they arrested them for selling their body for sex, none of the hookers were speaking in tongues. I noticed that the politicians, when they get caught for stealing our money up in Washington, D.C., I noticed none of them were speaking in tongues. But then I got around some of these people that had a glow on their face, that were living better than I was, that were happier than I was, and they was a speaking in tongues. And so it made me go the word. See, and I tell you what it took. It took meditating in that word a long time. Brokisto fronte buswa malekiche pakorondo satediste. And by my spirit, go into my word. Meditate in my word. You will see things you never saw before. But all you'll be seeking by your spirit, by my spirit, through my grace. Woo, by my grace and through faith, your response to my love. And you will see things and you will believe things. You never dreamed you'd see. You never dreamed you'd believe, says the Spirit of the Lord. Wow. I sure didn't have any intention of doing that. I got one of my wrens down here starting to sing a little bit. Right here on the ground behind the camera. They're my buddies. I've had I've been sitting in a rocking chair on the porch and I've had them flip that by my face that, that they they used to be really comfortable. I've seen a many a baby wren born under my shed here. I love I love the animals now. I can talk to them too. I, I had a had a doctor with me <laughs> stalking one day as we were sitting on the ground being still and the book came up and spooked and hopped off a little bit and went ah. That book turned around and went. 
That buck came right back to me and then he spooked again. And I ah, called him right back up again. I looked at the doctor and said, you know, I don't tell too many people this, but I talk to animals. <laughs> I ain't Tarzan, but I think I'm close kin to it. Boy, I love the outdoors. I love, uh, you know, I love people. I love being around people, but I love the solitude of the woods. That's the reason I love those mountains so much. And uh, But I'm going to tell you something. I believe in the local church. I don't know how I, did, how I got off on that. I was going to share about the Syrophoenician woman. And I guess I'm about to do that next week. <clears throat> but listen to me. Jesus loves you. And if you've got a pastor... I don't care. I know some Presbyterian, Baptist, Methodist. I know some that's so full of the love of God. I ain't hung up on your label. You've got a pastor that genuine lo genuinely loves you as a sheep. Don't ask him to call you when he needs some help. Show up and start helping. I'm going to write a book about that one day, how to help. Just go up and, like somebody's had a flat tire, don't go up there and say, well, you need some help. Go ahead, take the tire tool out of the hand and start loosening the lug nuts and putting the spare on there and, and says, hey, you just sit over there and relax. You say, help them, bless God. That's helping. They'll say, people tell me all the time, well, call me when you need some help. I always need some help. But I find a lot of times when one does show up, they got an ulterior motive. They're either looking for a husband or trying to get in good with God. You don't have to perform to get in good with God. He loves you. He died. He gave his son for you. Say this after me. Say, Jesus loved me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Say Jesus is Lord. Say that. Say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Say Jesus you died for me. I'm looking at Marines. They're right here close. Jesus you died for me. And I believe that God. You raised Jesus from the dead. I receive you. Woo, I believe and I receive I take it now. You are mine now, Lord Jesus. Well, if you just did that, you just got born again. Well, I don't feel. <clears throat> well, the word is working mightily in me. The word is working mightily in me. No matter what I feel, no matter what I see, the word is working mightily in me. Do, 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 do. <laughs> One guy said, you're a good preacher, but you can't sing worth the flip. And I said, I wanted to tell him where he could go south of heaven. <laughs> but I didn't. I kept my mouth shut. I can be a nice fellow about once every three months. Boy, I'm having fun. You know, it's funny. <clears throat> We've been having meetings in my pasture. We had one this past Sunday. A lady come all the way from Mexico to this meeting. Had a lady just moved here from California. Came to the meeting. Jumped up and started helping Fold the chairs up and everything afterwards. It was awesome. Listen, I got to go so I can come right back. Love you. I'll be right back in just a minute. Back again. Now, what's funny, I know I told it, but I'm going to tell it again because a lot of people miss hearing the story. I was sitting in uh, Madison Post Office parking lot, and there was a late car, red car from California sitting there. And... Uh, of course, I live in I love California. I know there's some weirdos out there. We got weirdos in Mississippi. We got religious idiots in Mississippi. But, but uh, <laughs> so I was in there opening my mail, <clears throat> and the Lord <clears throat> started putting this lady on my heart, sitting in the car, from, had her windows down, <clears throat> and uh, so I'm going out, and you know, and I'm kind of arguing back and forth with the Holy Spirit and, and I do this a lot but I try to be led and uh, so I'm sitting in there doing my mail and everything and I look over and I say alright and then I was just on the inside I knew I was going to be giving her some money I'd never seen her before in my life so I pulled out I had two twenties <clears throat> I took out forty dollars and a little invitation thing to the meeting in the pasture here and I reached I said look I know you don't know me I'm David I'm an evangelist I just want to bless you in Jesus name she was she's sitting there on her cell phone trying to find a local church she just moved from California because she blew her mind <clears throat> so I gave her the phone I mean in 30 minutes we was about I preach on third Thursday 
If you don't know about Third Thursday, go to daviddixon.org and sign up for it, and you'll get a link, and they'll send you a, uh, my lady from New York will send you New York City. Woo, Jersey girl. She will send you a text about an hour before third thirty. I share on on the phone live, and I interact with people. <clears throat> and she ended up on third Thursday with us, and and and, and uh, just moved to Mississippi from California. And she loved her some Jesus too. Man, she's refreshing. But, it, you know, it's just amazing what can happen when you listen down on the inside to what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. People say, well, ah, you you crazy if you believe God talks to you. Well, I am crazy, baby. And I'm having fun being crazy. Say it after me. Jesus is my Lord. I believe. Hey, I want to throw this little episode in on how to partner and help this ministry out. The word partner is one who takes part with another to do something. And I know a bunch of you want to take part with me to help me do something. What are we doing? We're doing discipling and evangelism. We're doing discipling especially through prayer, 4.30 every morning of the week, till for about an hour to an hour and a half, Monday through Friday, 11.30 to 1 p.m., we have, we have a bunch of folks praying daily. And the best way to disciple is somebody is through prayer and teaching of the Word and equipping. And another thing we're doing is evangel- evangelizing just like through this show. And we're reaching people one-on-one and through meetings. And there's a lot of fruit. And we're having a whole lot of fun. I want to read you a scripture. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind. This is a scripture. What you will give. That will protect you against sob stories. And I just don't know we're going to make it if you don't help us. I'm in my 42nd year. And uh, I ain't had to beg and I ain't had to sob for your money. This will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Tell you a real quick story about a young man that came to us, started praying with us. He was scared to get a job because he'd get around the crew again and get back on drugs. He temporarily went back on drugs, came off, and he will tell you the thing that has helped him more than anything else. He prays with us daily. He became a youth pastor. The, the, the great fruit and he's been off of drugs and he'll tell you the best thing that ever helped him was daily prayer daily in the word with us and in growing with a group that loves him so that's just one of the stories some of the fruit there's many more and we'll share others thank you for helping i know you want to it's high noon with david he's gone and fallen in love with jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.